Hey guys, it's Summer Rush. Today, I'm going to be going through the map Berlin and kind of going through my experiences on how this map plays out and trying to... I'm going to show you a replay that I think demonstrates my experiences with the map, like, so far in the current meta. So, in this one, I am in my Centurion r 71 I'm platooned with someone that I'm mentoring, and basically, the premise of this game is we're going to take a position that Wargaming would never suggest a medium go to. I have found the best luck on this map is C5. So if you want to see how that works, great. Otherwise, I've given you the answer to this map. So the reason I go to C5 on this map is because I've gone into training rooms and I've actually played this map a good number of times and I've tried the south and the middle and I've had very little success in those positions. If, on this map like basically what happens is if you go to the south you have to push into a bunch of TDs and they're given very strong positions like if you look at the minimap here you know TDs sit here, TDs sit back here. It's almost impossible to push into the south be just because of the TD positions that Wargaming has given them. The bushes are perfect, it's impossible to spot STRVs back there and so it doesn't work. Um, and that kind of leaves you with two other positions basically the bridge is useless in the north that's where a lot of people just go to camp and so you can either come to the city where heavy tanks fight or you can play the mid and you can see i've decided to come to the city i can explain why the mid is bad but you know if anyone's gone to the bunker they'll realize there's not a whole lot of opportunity for a huge amount of cost over there so I come to the city. Now, this puts you in a really tough spot if you're not very good at brawling. The fundamental way to make this play work is if you see my position here, what I've done is I'm putting myself in between two alleyways. So there could be tanks to my right, there could be tanks to my left, and you can see when there's an opening in this alleyway, I can just kind of sit here, watch down, and see if anyone pushes up, and then watch this E75. As he gets impatient, he's going to create opportunities for me. Now, I'm worried he's going to YOLO my platoon mate here, and he does fire, and so what's happening is we're coordinating in a platoon i'm saying hey to my t54 why don't you go flank him i'll take the hits from the c75 and we can just finish him off you know assuming he's not getting farmed by anyone else so i'm able to challenge this e75 right here and you can see there's kind of an opening being placed on this t50 for this t54 but he's not able to take advantage of it because something like a t95 gets spotted so because of the way this works and because of my tank i'm able to brawl with the e75 effectively um, this isn't necessarily how you should play in like a T-54 or tanks with low gun depression, but I'm playing to the strengths of the scent in this instance, and you can see I'm able to play ridge games very well. If you don't have the gun depression game, you have to use people's reload, and so you can see, I actually, in this instance, I don't have the perfect uh, reload to do much, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hit from the IS-3, put a shot into him, that's going to allow me to beat, well, I was pretty sure it'll allow me to beat the E75's reload, but basically with this type of trading going on, I'm able to work with my platoon mate and put this E75 in a crossfire. Now, eventually when this E75 chills out, you can see he's going to the right and that's going to put him against my T54. I'm trying to get this IS-3 to shoot. Now, what's going to happen is eventually he should, but he doesn't, and the E75 pushes through, and so we're able to just put a tracking shot at the E75. Now, unfortunately, my platoon mate gets shot here, and we're going to play the typical meet, like, this is what mediums have to do in the city, so you have to take advantage of people who are reloading. So, I put a shot into his lower plate, that makes him a one-shot, and you can see the IS-3 starts pushing up. So, the IS-3 shoots, and I'm going to be able to take advantage of his reload, and you can see, this is just brawling in a medium tank, and this is what I have found the most luck with on this map. Now, the way this flank works is what I was getting at, so you can see the 53 is pushing in, takes two of these guns, and basically gets them distracted. I decide to take the hit from the IS-3 to try to get the kill, and I low roll, and so the guy's on 10 HP, and what's going to happen is, I've got a reload where I can kill an IS-3 or an E-75, I go for the E-75, he's just a bigger threat right here, and this IS-3, like, I'm supported if he decides to YOLO me, you can see, by backing up, I prevent that IS-3 from finishing me off, and so it was the better shot to take out that E-75. Now, the 53 misses his kill on the IS-3, which is fine, and I'm going to decide to push in. There's an AMX who's looking away, and I would say this is a not very common position for heavy tank drivers to take, but in this case he is, and while I'm in this spot, you can see there's there's multiple angles that start to become an issue. I decide to focus down this AMX to help out this 53 TP, and once he dies... Um, you're going to notice I'm going to start pushing in to go after this T95 and so on. Now, this is going to be a rough angle to play, especially with the Progetto right here, but we're going to be able to put a shot into him, make him effectively a two-shot for us. Hopefully, the 53 gets another one into him. He does. And now, the Progetto is a one-shot. You can see, so I check that, and now I'm in a position where I'm flanking the T95. Now, bounce to the rear of the T95. I've got Hesh loaded for this, and given my hit points, I can take a hit from the T95, so it's not that big of a deal. I've got Hesh loaded. I'm going to try to pen the side. 
of the T95, you can see that one goes in. You can actually pen the side of a T95 with Hesh on the, like, just based on the mechanics of Hesh. You can see I'm going to try to finish off this guy with HE here. This is kind of where I make a bit of a mistake. I go for his commander's hatch, and he just gets one into me. This tank's pretty large, so fair enough. Now, the problem with that is we're in the city. I've done 4.7k damage, which admittedly is a very good game so far. And, uh, well, I don't know where that progetto is. So, because there's an opening, if you look on the map, I'm going to steal my camera here. Because there's an opening here for the progetto to come through, I kind of expected the progetto to try to clip out my T54, 53, and myself. We're all one-shots in this situation. And so I'm basically just camping this, waiting for the progetto to do that, because I have 200 ping, I can't drive around this corner and expect to outreact the guy. And so, you know, based on the situation, is waiting for that. It never happened, though, which is really lucky for our team. Now, I should have the WZ in misses, that's fine. And you can see... The bottom line is that this position will consistently give you results. My experiences on this map have been that if you go to the south or anything like that, you're going to find, first of all, with the south, you have to commit. So there's no getting away. On the side of the map, you can actually get away if you need to. And, uh, well, like I've said already with the TDs. So now we're kind of put into a carry position on this map. And admittedly, I have never carried on this map before. And so what I've done is I've come to this spot. And from this spot in the mid, and this is one of the reasons I like to control the mid, you get a lot of really decent shots on people who are pushing into your base and so you can see there's a pershing in the mid who's playing the bunker and we're going to be able to put a shot into him unfortunately i don't have hash loaded for this and the the apc are just low rolls you can see it's down to 323 so it's whatever and uh my platoon mate comes to take this angle to get a shot. Now, I'm still apprehensive about that Progetto or someone from his angle, and you can see an EBR was actually trying to make that play. He just got killed by rabbit underscore nine uh, on our team there, so great job to him. You can see the 53 TP is clearing out the Progetto, so we don't have to worry about getting flanked and clipped out. Meanwhile, we've got this Pershing in the mid, and this is ultimately the problem I have with the bunker. If you're going to play on this map, you're going to notice that the bunker puts you really in the open and at the center of everyone's attention. I'm focusing this guy down because I'm a one shot. There's no aggressive play that I can reasonably make right here. And you can see it's not just myself. It's the T54. There's a T49 over here who's looking for shot. I think the Pantera as well. Everyone focuses down the bunker. And so if you're trying to make plays and make things happen, it's very hard to do from that spot because if you're in the center of the map in an elevated position everyone farms you. So you can see I've come over to this angle to try to get better shots on the Pershing. They don't happen immediately, but if I speed it up, you can see, like, he can't escape. And that's just because of the nature of the bunker. I really don't like that position because it's so inflexible. We're able to put a shot into him, which is huge cost to him. He's down to 499 HP. And if he continues to run away, we'll be able to turn him into a one shot. Um, you know, which would help out our team a lot. Now, from a carrying perspective, trying to win this when we've won the North and they've won the South, I would say positionally, they are at a disadvantage, especially with our GSOR down here, because there's bushes back here that someone can reset the cap from pretty much. Like, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it'd be difficult to cap out. You can see we'd lose the GSOR to an STRV1, and then suddenly the the Pershing is, I don't know, I think he's going back to reset. Regardless, put a shot into him and track him. So hopefully someone else is able to finish him off. If he doesn't get finished off, we might be able to get the shot. My platoon mate, Kasky, gets the kill. And from here, uh, well, we could be capping out. You can see our team's pushing into their base, but the primary worry for my platoon right now is defending our base because we don't know what they have on cap, how much HP they have, and if we can YOLO that, they've only got two tanks, we might be able to kill two of the enemy vehicles for free. Now, I haven't figured out the best way to reset cap, so I'm not going to try to give you an answer on how to do that. I'm going to show you how my platoon went about doing it with 18 seconds left in this current position. So, the way we see this, and I'm going to pause this because this is kind of relevant to how the map plays out. Um, they've got a standard B. If you look at the map right here, they've got a standard B in this back corner. So um, with him where he is, it might make sense to drive around and flank. Now, the problem is we have 10 seconds, right? So that's the issue. Uh, the other issue is that they've got a couple tanks unspotted and they have a Progetto who's last unspotted back here. So it's reasonable to expect maybe a Progetto to be sitting on one of these mounds back here overwatching this flank. Now, with the time crunch that we have and the positioning of the enemy team with them controlling the south, for us to reset the cap by flanking might be perfect, and it's really lucky that the T-49 just got a shitload of damage there, but, you know, based on the, the situation that we had, coming in from the angle that we did was the best. Now, this play worked out because they also lost the standard B on the 9 line, and he could have done a lot of damage to our team right here. Now, Kasky's in a very aggressive position with a Progetto who is last spotted in the south, and so he's just getting safe. We don't want to die here to Progetto because that would absolutely throw the game. So we're just going to get dark. And what we're doing is we're trying to figure out where we think they might be. Now, we know they've got an STRV in G1. They also have an STRV in J1. And this Progetto 
from our perspective, probably went back to base if he hasn't killed us yet. You know what I mean? Like, if he was there to help the enemy team cap out, he would have been spotted already. And so what we're doing is we're basically assuming the south is reasonably clear all the way down to the three line. We have control of the north, and we're in a situation where we have to try to kill an STRV, a Progetto, and another STRV. And so this is where the bunker area starts to become relevant because we controlled the north and we know where the rest of their team are they're kind of boxed in the south now our full hp is3 yola's in he fine <laughs> he was full hp he's very gonna quickly gonna lose that hp he spots a progetto now i've got hash loaded for this progetto because i want to me it like i need that to pen it doesn't pen it does 151 damage and the guy's left on 723 hp so if that had penned might have done more module damage could have helped out the game and we just lost 1500 hp because the is3 pushed into a progetto an strv and another strv and so we're in this rough position where we have to try to deal with the cap now this has a lot of thought and there's a lot of patience right now what i'm saying to my platoon mate is we're kind of going through how to attack the cap now we don't know exactly if there's a reasonable way to cap out we know where this last g1 strv was spotted he was spotted in the g1 bush of course they've also got an strv in j1 and they also have a progetto in k3 now from our perspective if you look at our hp one shot one shot one shot and one shot you know we're all one shots and they're strvs it's kind of i remember literally saying this in the platoon at this point it's incumbent on them to push because we were at a disadvantage now we had map control but they have full hp strvs and really high hp progetto so we just don't have the hp advantage and so what we're doing is we're chilling out now in hindsight, looking at this replay, I would try to figure out if there's any way to cap out. And the reality is, there's probably an STRV in this bush overwatching the cap. And you can see, as I'm here, I'm looking. I'm trying to use my sixth sense to figure that out. So what I'm doing is, I don't know if there's a tank in this bush. I say there probably is. There was one last spotted there. And so what I do is I poke my turret out. I'm trying to see if my sixth sense goes off. That's going to tell me if someone is in the bush in G1 or not. Now... Uh, I didn't get lit and so that's actually really useful information from my perspective I was like oh maybe we can get on cap because there's no one in G1 now it's a really good thing we didn't capitalize on that because if you continue to watch the game there's actually going to be a tank up there and the problem with this map and the capping out on this map is that there's too many bushes that are very very strong you can see I poke out again I don't think I'm going to get spotted here and then I'm pretty sure I do get lit if it's not this poke it's one that I poked a lot just to try to get information right so What's happening here is we're in a decent position. I forget why we had Kasky move over to here. I think he had trouble in the mid, and what we ultimately wanted is we wanted to try to get eyes in the south so we could push through the south on this map. And really, uh, it's hard to play the south at the beginning of the game. It's even harder when you've got full HP STRVs who are intent on getting a draw. <laughs> <laughs> who are sitting in the back of the map and so eventually Kasky pushes down into here and i'll just fast forward it here because you know it's basically we're one shots we're waiting for them to push they're full hp we're not and basically what i say is Kasky, why don't you try you have turret armor you're relatively small why don't you try to get up to here and see what you can find and so Kasky goes and does that we've got multiple tanks in the south and then suddenly i get lit and we have no idea how the hell i get lit so what i do is i check to make sure i didn't get spotted with my ass hanging out back here and Kasky's pushed into position now Kasky's going to try to get into this spot right down here and you know as a t54 driver to me that's a really reasonable play because he's trying to spot any tds sitting at j3 and you can see he tries to make that happen he's got support behind him and this is the this is the situation he gets spotted and he dies now that's just the way the south works so when wargaming says you have to take your medium to the south i i I have no idea how they expect you to do that. There's 100% bushes back there, and the experience of Kasky, who's a top tier T54 in this situation, depicts exactly the problem with pushing the south. Now, Kasky's dead, we've got two mediums in the south, and I just get spotted. Now, it's really obvious that someone is in this bush right here who spotted me. So what I'm doing is I'm, I've got Hesh loaded, and I'm gonna blind fire at this bush to try to hit probably one of the STRVs who's in this position. So you can see, pop out, take a blind shot, that explodes. So we know it didn't hit a tank. Now I got relit there, so it, it implies there's someone in this bush. I'm just gonna keep popping out because there's a minute left. I can't YOLO this bush. You know, the enemy team is deciding to camp in the south of the map and the way this map is designed they're able to so i put another shot out you can see that one goes wildly high the strv 103 gets the kill and uh well <laughs> really there's no way we can win this i can't go look at the tanks in the south but you know if you've ever played on this map you know how difficult it is to push in um the bottom line being is if you're having trouble with this map you need to focus on playing the north because i don't know how the hell wargaming expects you to do well 
on this side of the map. There's a couple of plays you can kind of argue are reasonable, I guess. I don't know. I've, I've played this map plenty of times. I have no idea. The south is just so awful um, and so... Jesus. Regardless, <laughs> I did 6,000 damage. I went to the city. That's how it happened. I think it's a very consistent play to go to the city. If you've managed to make the south work, feel free to... I'd be very interested in figuring that out. You know, Kasky tried it. He died. I've tried it like eight times. I've died. There's a reason this Pantera in T20 didn't push it. It just never works. But uh, yeah, let's go look at the end plates and we'll call the video there. <laughs> kind of hope this was instructive to a degree. All right, so that was the game. It ended up being a draw because <laughs> you saw their fucking TDs. Uh, that was actually the second mark of excellence for my sent 7 slash 1, which is fantastic. 60k damage, 3 kills. None of my blind shots hit, of course. We would have seen if they had. And um, yeah, I mean, not really... This game isn't relevant to how the team did. You know, I did well, and that's kind of the point. It's like, if you go to the position I took on this map, I feel like you can reasonably expect to do well. You know, assuming you have support... And one of the problems I've noticed is if they take the bridge, you know, your position becomes actually really tenuous. But you have to be aware of that type of play. So honestly, on this map, where I went is what I've found, and that's how I do well. I have no clue how to play the south. I'm interested to see other people's videos and see how they do that because, uh, well, you know, I, I get good results in the city as it is. So hopefully this video is helpful. If you want to see more, be sure to the like and the subscribe button. I will be camping. So next video will be sometime around Saturday. We'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for watching.